Here we go, ladies and gentlemen, from the Daily Mail. Stephen Colbert's The Late Show staff who were arrested for unlawful entry to the Capitol last month will not be prosecuted. DOJ says they wouldn't have been able to get convictions of those including Triumph the Insult comic dog. Hmm. Now, why is that? Is it because uh, they're in D.C. and D.C. likes these people? Is that how it works? I would assume so, but let's read. So the nine members of the Late Show staff arrested for unlawfully entering the Capitol last month will not be prosecuted, the DOJ has ruled. The Capitol Police released a statement Monday night in an update on the incident involving members associated with Stephen Colbert's talk show. Uh, they say the U.S. Attorney's Office then confirmed they would not be moving forward with the case because they wouldn't have been able to secure convictions according to a statement obtained by Axios. So let me just, uh, here we go. They say the United States Capitol Police have been working with the U.S. Attorney's Office, the district, blah, blah, blah. The US, USCP arrested nine people for unlawful entry uh, because members of the group had been told several times before they entered the congressional buildings that they had to remain with the staff escort inside the building, and they failed to do so. The U.S. Capitol Police was just informed the U.S. Attorney's Office for the District of Columbia is declining to prosecute the case. We respect the decision the office has made. Colbert dismissed the comparison between the arrests and the January 6th riot as a non-surrection and joked Triumph the Insult comic dog should be charged with first degree puppetry. Ha ha ha. No, it's a point. It's a point about a double standard. <laughs> he should be arrested for that joke. Seriously. That's I so mean, bad. the show is just not funny. Ugh. It used to be. Did you like it back? Like back in the day when he was doing the just the O'Reilly thing and a lot of people didn't even know it was satire. I thought it was different and it funny. Was. And then it just slowly. <laughs> Trump made comedy like comedians just brains break, essentially. And uh, yeah. Oof. It's political punditry. If you watch the beginning of the show, it's like a political monologue almost. Mm. At yeah. least the last one I watched was. I had to turn it off. Yeah. No, it's I didn't brutal. have to. I chose to. There you go. You're your I own man. Finito. <laughs> right. I had enough. Yeah. Stephen Colbert and his fake smile. Goodbye. Like he's one of those people. Look at pictures of me that he's smiling even when you know like he's not necessarily happy today. He's just a joker. <laughs> it's like, that kind of smile where you're like, oh, you're hurting inside. Yeah. Mm, What's going sorry, on there? Yeah. <laughs> so, so Mike Cernovich tweeted this. When you have absolute power, you don't even need to pretend. Even as people face trial for walking into a building with open doors, D.C. Democrats free their own regime propaganda. So that is one way to put it. Yeah. But I think it's true. They would not have been able to secure a conviction because you bring Triumph, the insult comic dog actor, into a courtroom with, with uh, jurors from D.C. And they're going to be like, but they're the good guys. They're allowed to break the law. Right? Also, I mean... First of all, if he was in court, my God, I hope they would let him like actually act using the puppet would be amazing. But Can I you remember- provide for the jury a demonstration of your of your show. <laughs> okay, here's the thing. <laughs> that would be fucking. That would be, that would be great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Houston, <laughs> Houston, <laughs> August, where I can actually say that and not feel bad. Um, I, I mean, I remember. So my last day job, I was 22. I worked at Borders Books and Music in Columbus Circle, where I all pretty much almost got fired every day. I would hide under the desk and drink cough syrup. I was oh, a very no. sad uh, <laughs> boy. And, but CNN was right there. And the one time I hung out with Robert Smigel, who does Triumph, it was me, Robert Smigel, and Tucker Carlson. Just Wait, what? Just kicking it. Like, no, you're yeah, joking. No, I swear to God. It was before the second George Bush uh, election. Tucker wasn't like known as He's like- He's wearing a bow tie. Yeah, he was, he, <laughs> no, he yeah. was wearing the bow tie. Okay. And he was just like, ah, Bush is going to win. But like, he didn't seem thrilled about it. They were just hanging out. They were just like literally kicking it, drinking uh, outside of, of this borders. And it was one of those moments where I'm like, this whole thing is fake. This is weird. It's yeah. all, it's all <laughs> fake. Like nobody actually, there's no one on the right- who seriously thinks that Colbert and Triumph the Insult comic dog should be arrested. And then the majority of the people on the left, not on Twitter, either they were sort of fed complete fear propaganda about January 6th, or they're just kind of indifferent about it. You know what I mean? I mean, it's, the, the, the polls show most people actually don't care. They don't care. And they're like, what? I mean, I will say it is different in the sense that Colbert, funny or not, is attempting comedy, was attempting satire, just like if we tried to do a bit on the White House steps or whatever for, for Cast Castle, um, whereas January 6th was politically motivated. Uh, that's uh, 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 both are first are 1A issues. So your right to satirize, insult, and mock is the same as your right to march to the, to, to, to the Capitol and protest. The thing is... So, so I so look the people who rioted and smashed windows. Obviously, you charge. That's them. what I'm saying. Yes. You have them on camera. They're being violent. They're destroying things. You know that that pisses me off. 
there were like a, there was like a book sh- book stand by a window that someone smashed into. It's like, bro, that's like an artifact of this country. One of the, like, if not the great, like the greatest nation on this planet in terms of expansion of civil rights and and, and the hard fought battles we've had. And you're like just besmirching this awesome stuff. Yeah. But the people who entered the building when the doors were opened did nothing. That yeah, they walked up. One guy had a cop waving him in. And he showed that to the judge and the judge said, okay, dismiss. That's insane. You can't charge someone for that. The fact that there are people still sitting in jail or that, that old lady, that old lady was not, I, I, look, for, correct me if I'm wrong, but that 69-year-old cancer patient, I'm pretty sure wasn't smashing windows and fighting yeah. with cops. Should have been a Russian asset, bro. You don't know. She was charged with trespassing because people on the other side of the building that didn't see the riot walked up to open doors there's a video of police opening the door saying, I don't agree with it, but I respect it. And those people are like, yay, and they're being let in. Right. But the Colbert people get let go. Right. Yeah, we got serious trouble in this country if there's two-tier legal system. You should definitely let that old lady go. I didn't know about that. She was probably just looking for her grandkids or something. Yeah, who knows? I mean, regardless, it's like she's 69 and she has cancer, dude. And they yeah. gave her two months. She's probably... Two months. Yeah. It's, it's really obvious the message they're sending. You know... This is why so many people just side with the left on everything, refuse to speak up because they know which way the machine churns. They know which way the valve is going. And if you just blindly march in lockstep, you get you get leeway, you get you get free access. But if you're some, you know, doofy MAGA guy who sees the cop open the doors and smile and wave you in and take a (laughs) selfie with you, they're going to put you in solitary. Yeah, this is really troubling to me because I see this as the politicization of our justice system, which should upset everyone. And I know the left isn't going to think this is a big deal until it comes for them because they never tend to. But the fact of the matter is that this will affect everyone. And anyone who's looking past what Thomas Sowell calls the first stage, like stage one, is going to realize that this is going to turn around and bite them really hard somewhere down the road. I got to read Thomas Sowell. I, yes, you do. I used to say Correct. this when I uh, when I got in a bit of trouble for talking about drone strikes on Conan, when I was like, hey, if I know we like Obama. I know he makes cool Spotify playlists. Right. I know his wife seems awesome and he plays basketball and they high five and fist bump and she has a garden. But also if he is droning weddings and children... Even if you like it when Obama does it, because Obama doesn't like a cool guy way. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you, who is going to be the next president? And everyone was like, it's fine. And then it was Donald Trump. And it's like, that's why people need principles instead of parties. Yes. If you have principles, these are the principles I stand for. Then it doesn't matter who's in power. Exactly. And in fact, you should be more upset when it's your team going against your morals because they represent you. So man, shouldn't you speak up? Yeah. That's why when it's like, I hear cops speak up against, you know, bad cops. You go, yeah, man, that's really important. When you hear liberals talk about how woke culture has gone crazy, it's like, yeah, it's like, you know, the people you get mad at the most in your life are your family. And one, it's most of our families are insane. But also (laughs) it's because like we love them. They mean the most to us. So you're more emotionally invested. I wish people did that instead of just blindly going on Twitter. And I used to do this. Something controversial would happen. And I'd be like, man, I don't know about this issue. And then I'd see, how sort of my team lined up and I go all right well I guess that's the tweet I guess I got to side with them or else I'm gonna get in trouble that's the craziest thing when the Covington Catholic thing happened do you know about that the Covington Catholic thing Taylor so like you're like being thrust into politics and like you know (laughs) recently so there are these kids standing on the on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial minding their own business when some dude gets in his face banging the drum someone snipped that video from like it was like a really long live stream or something wasn't it and then they put up this clip making it seem like the kid had gotten the face of the Native American who was like mocking him or something. And so I was getting inundated with people who were like moderate libertarian right wing being like, dude, Tim, did you see this? This is messed up. Like it's making us look bad. And then I was like, what is it? And they were like, bro, this kid got in his face. And I was like, really? I, where's the video? And right. they're like, it's right there. I'm like, that's just a video of two people standing in front of each other. Mm-hmm. But everyone just got in lockstep. And this is the problem with modern politics. But this is also why you will not be criminally charged because not one of these people is like, I'm not going up against the woke mob for this. Yeah. You, like, you think a DC prosecutor is like, oh yeah, I'll get reelected if I do that. Sorry. No, no, no. It's all political. If you get arrested, like Steve Bannon right now, he just walked out of court recently for the contempt charges. A DC jury 
They don't care. Apparently, I saw, I, I fact check me on this one. I just saw it and there's a lot of preliminary work that's got to be done. A juror apparently said, I don't care what he says. I don't, I won't believe a word he says because of who he affiliates with. Well, mm-hmm. that person should be on a jury. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> but this, look, when uh, Chauvin was being, was, was going to be tried in, in Minnesota, they tried to get a change of venue, but the judge said there is no venue in the state where people don't know about this case. My opinion then is case dismissed. If you can't have a fair trial, you're done. Right. You could maybe ask for another state to hold the trial where people don't know, but you can argue if everybody is biased against you and you can't have a fair trial, you cannot be tried. You are free to go because it is better that 10 guilty persons escape than one innocent person suffer. Instead, they were just like, nah, we'll have a sham trial. There's riots outside. The jurors are being brought in with armed police officers carrying rifles. Mm -hmm. And everybody is terrified of the riots. And the jurors actually said they were scared of the riots. But uh, seems fair to me. That's where we're going. Chauvin got the book thrown at him. About and then two some, weeks the ago, I think, what yep. did they do, like a five life sentences or something stupid? Is that what it was? I don't know. I some, don't some ridiculous amount I mean, of to be fair, he's a murderer. Like, that was not good. And also set back, poli- like, this again is what I was talking about, right? It's like, you have something that blatant. It's not well, a Black uh-oh. Lives Matter versus Blue uh-oh. Lives Matter. Th- oh, we're going to get into our first fight? <laughs> no, I don't, think, I don't think you watched any of the case. I don't think you... Uh, the video? Yeah, I don't think you know anything about it. I just watched the video. There's multiple Did, did you watch the, the, the full nine-minute body camera footage? And did you listen to the police experts? No, we watched- Kim, I'm trying to live a happy life. Exactly. I just saw what Twitter wanted me to see, yeah. and I saw the guy get killed, and I was like, all right, I'm done. The show, the, it, it was when you learned the drugs that uh, what's George Floyd was on, he was on five different drugs. I yeah. think it was, he was fentanyl. He was behind the wheel of a car high on fentanyl, firstly. Right. So he should have been arrested immediately right. for that stuff. Meth, methamphetamines, he had his nicotine. Speedball. Marijuana. Well, why did you guys tell me that before I wore my George Floyd t-shirt on the show tonight? <laughs> you need all types. Yeah. All Come guys. on, man. He has to be put on the ground. Floyd did. But Chauvin did murder him. He right. did kill him. I mean, and, and as far murder. as we can tell, it was an illegal killing. So that's considered a murder. I mean, every uh, here's I what I'm basing it on. Because uh, no, I of course I didn't know that stuff because I that you probably had to dig to find that stuff because it was so against the mainstream. I'm basing what I'm talking about on the cops I've talked to who were like livid and and in the trial sorry to interrupt no 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 you're good. but but in the trial uh the def- the state's own witness argued that Chauvin was justified in using a higher degree of force than he actually used mm. they actually had the continuum of force shown in the trial and he said because George Floyd was on drugs that you know like they don't, they don't know exactly what he was doing but he was belligerent yeah kicking on the chair and screaming at that degree, the state allow the police are allowed to use tasers. Chauvin, uh, I don't believe pulled him out of the vehicle. I'm not sure if he pulled him out of the vehicle. He, he asked to be pulled out. He was in the well, backseat. That, that was before kicking Chauvin and kicking, got there. And, yeah, and then they, they pulled him out later on the ground. I don't know. I don't know if Chauvin was involved. When Chauvin out. arrived, he was kicking to get out of the vehicle, and the state that was prosecuting Chauvin said, "Yes, he could have used a higher degree of force, but chose not to." Mm-hmm. Right then, I was like, "Whoa, you got reasonable doubt on murder." You have a cop who is who is told by his training that he is allowed to use a taser, but said, I'm going to do less force than I'm actually allowed to do. Right there, I'm like, that's it. He had no intent to kill them. Well, but he did less force improperly. And this is why cops There's need to be- There's a picture in the training manual of the police doing that exact maneuver. Yeah, and no, 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 no. But what I'm saying is improperly in the sense that, and this is from the cops I've talked to as well, they are trained- horrifically one they don't train enough two a lot of their training is antiquated especially when it comes to -to hand-to-hand combat well i was listening to jocko talk about the response of the uvalde uh shooting and he made a great point that i will quote now everywhere uh i go whereas cops should spend 20 percent of their time training yes period training in firearms training in tactical situations training in jujitsu if you I mean, one, a taser probably wouldn't have killed him, whereas that improper choke would have. Any blue belt, you train jujitsu for a year, two years, you know how to put someone who is on drugs. The reason jujitsu is great is because if someone's on, if he's all high on PCP and I break someone's arm and stuff, he may not feel it. All right, right, but hold on, hold on. So for one, I think there was a, a probably justifiable manslaughter charge in the duration of the the, the, uh, the restraint. The yes, yes, right. Yes. But that's about it. The, the, the issue is, do we tell this one officer who was instructed to do everything he did that he's going to pay the price for the broken system to appease a mob? 
or do we change the system? Instead of actually changing anything, all they did was lock this guy and the other cops up and then tell all the activists mission accomplished and the activists went away. Well, and this is the problem with so many issues is we just try to duct tape solutions so people move on to the next thing they're angry about and we don't actually change the system. This happens with all the systems that are broken where it's like I think between that, between the school shootings, we absolutely need to be focusing on like getting cops better training. And it doesn't seem like that means defunding them. It means getting them better training and letting them train more instead of just, you know, sit around. I I concur. I agree. I agree. Too. Well, but to wrap it all back up with the <laughs> with the, the point of the segment, though, just to make the point. No, let's end on this, everyone this, agreeing with me. You're this, talking about just just trial, Willink, I was going to say, regardless of um, like what people believe about the case, it's really dangerous how many people pass a judgment on it without watching the trial yeah, and without getting all the evidence. Politics 101. Mm. We sit here on the show, we pull up the clips, we watched Rittenhouse. We had how many? Seven witnesses to the Rittenhouse case on this show. Seven, I think. Journalists, people involved, people who are like, I can only say a little bit because I've been subpoenaed. And then from these interviews, we were like, it's very clear Kyle Rittenhouse was was innocent. But did the media do any of that? I, it's remarkable that you've got people who are like, you know, Tim Cast isn't journalism. What we do isn't journalism. And it's like, well, for one, this show is political commentary on journalism. But when we're sitting here with you, watching these videos, showing you the sources, explaining why we think this source is good, that's like a million times better journalism than, say, the New York Times lying about, you know, Ukraine or something and, and Trump. Well, and also we can ask questions. That's why I love being on this show where it's like when you asked me if I saw that video, I was like, nope. nope like this is what I saw. And now that is going to, of course, and it should uh, inform me. Whereas if I knew something you guys didn't, you guys would do the same thing. But, right. You, but look, I, I think one of the strongest divisions between left and right of this country is the left doesn't know anything about the news and the right does. And that's really it. It's exemplified a million to one when I point out ground.news, bias fact check, Twitter blind spotter, load up Ben Shapiro, like the most prominent conservative Orthodox Jew, and you'll find him balanced between left and right wing news. You pull up the entire NBC news team and it's all 100% left wing. That was me, remember? Yeah. So so (laughs) this is the issue with this country is that these people like Washington Post, CNN, whoever else who smeared the Covenant Catholic kids. Yeah, because they don't read, they don't watch, they did zero investigation. And you know what I did? I watched the two hour live stream. Someone was like, what happened? I was like, well, I better watch this two hour live stream on Facebook to see what it's all about. And I was like, so the black Hebrew Israelites were there and the kids were heckling them because they're racist anti-Semites. And then this Native American guy got up in their faces and someone snipped that and accused them. I was like, okay. So I made a video about it saying, why is everybody doing this? Even conservatives were like, they didn't read anything. I was amazed by that. Mm. Then you got AOC. She fabricated her January 6th story, completely fabricated right. it. And I'm just like, dude, look, there is a, a, a the, the exception on the right that prominent figures will put out fake news. It's the exception. It happens. I'll call them out. It is the rule on the left. Almost everything they say is always just misinformed, malformed nonsense. Well, and the bottom line is if you truly believe in your convictions, if you truly believe in your side, if you truly believe in what you are voting for, then lying, exaggerating, not letting the other side, not even addressing the other side, uh, it's going to completely contradict what you're trying to do. It's just going to turn people against you. There's just two cultures in this country. And we're seeing the emergence of, there's an article today I was reading about the emergence of parallel economies. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll I'll do this shout out too. We'll go, we'll, we'll, uh, several years ago, I said the dangerous thing about censorship with what's happening on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, is that it will lead to what's called a parallel economy. And we've seen this pre-World War I, when people stop trading with each other, it creates distinct economic blocks that can arm and develop resources and then sustain a fight with each other. If there is one economic system, a sustained fight is not possible Mm -hmm. because one group that gets excised from it struggles to maintain any kind of resources. This is the goal of sanctions. We're gonna cut you out of the global financial payment system and then you can't wage war against us. Although that's failing because I I would argue, you know, Joe Biden. But now we're actually seeing it. And the funny thing is about the emergence of the parallel economy, we're a part of it, 
We are yeah. actively supporting the company called Parallel Economy, which we use. Sign up at TimCast.com hey. and support Parallel Economy. But they literally call themselves Parallel Economy. It's art imitates life. And there will be a multitude of Parallel Economies. This is not, not the last. But I don't. I, I think it might start. Uh, look, you've got Getter, Parler, Truth Social. That's a sort of fracturing. But eventually... The quote unquote right will 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 have its singular space, which may be truth social. It will have its track, its version of Silicon Valley, which is forming in Florida with Rumble and Parallel Economy. I believe Parallel Economy is in Florida. I'm not entirely sure. But you're going to have the emergence of a tech sector on the East Coast to compete against the West Coast tech sector. And they're going to have two different kinds of rules. And then you look at truth social and the left, like we're not going there. And the right's going to be like, Twitter's stupid. I got banned. I don't want to be there anyway. And then you're going to have two communication networks, two financial service networks. You are going to have states completely at odds with each other like you already do. And then, well, and then. You know, I think the worst conflict can come from having a, a, a unipolar economy because people are more like when you look at revolution, all these horrible, bloody revolutions, pretty much Maybe not all of them, but I'm saying the revolts against monarchs, not all of them, but a lot of the horrific stuff we've seen in society is a revolt against a monarch. I guess you could say that two parallel economies might come to blows as well, but I find like slave uprisings are more dangerous and insidious because people will blow up their own land to, to get out. And, and I mean, of course, an enemy will blow up your land as well. Man, maybe they're equally as dangerous. Thanks for checking out this clip from TimCast IRL. Come hang out live Monday through Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern time. Super chat. We'll even answer some of your questions. If you want to check out the After Hours Censored Show, go to TimCast.com and become a member. We put those up Monday through Thursday at 11 p.m. They're very funny, not very family friendly. We'll love to see you there. Thanks for hanging out, and we'll see you all next time.